Warren Kinsella is my guest. He is a partisan pundit, a liberal who has been chief of staff in a pile of federal ministries. He runs a political consulting firm called The Daisy Group, and he has written books on everything from international terrorism to punk rockers. His new one is Fight the Right. What prompted it? Any specific thing? Yeah, it was a, a, a friend in Toronto, and uh, she's progressive. And she's like a lot of progressives. She's like, how can a guy like Rob Ford become mayor of Canada's biggest, most diverse, mm -hmm. you know, most progressive city? And it grew out of that, which is we have to give conservatives their due. I don't agree with many of the choices they make, but they're getting really good at winning elections. And why is that? It's communications and values. They stick to that, and it's paying dividends for them. I mean, the European Union now is conservative in a way that it's never been in its history. And yet somebody like James Carville in the United States, who is like, uh, you know, a lefty, Clinton, mm -hmm. all of that, and he paints conservatives as uh, knuckle draggers, mouth breathing. I do this. I've done the same thing. You know, you want to kind of rednecks. You know, knuckle dragging, redneck, mouth breather, and all that stuff. But what I've noticed, what I caution my fellow progressives against, is conservatives don't mind that. They like it because what they do is they play judo with it. They say, "Oh, look what he's calling us. They're calling us stupid again," and it's like. You and me, the voter, you know, see, look what they're saying about you mm -hmm. and me. It's not just me, it's, it's all you guys together. Sure, but then on the other side, uh, uh, the liberals are snobby and latte drinking. They're elitist. Most of them are lawyers who lead, all of that, uh, and they're not me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is what the conservatives here in Canada expertly did with Michael Ignatieff and Stefan Dion. And they were both, uh, as you know, you know, very mm -hmm. educated uh, accomplished men. They were decent men. You know, they weren't they weren't crooks. And um, but they used it was incredible. The conservative campaign with both of those men was using their education and their refinement against mm -hmm. them. And they did that in a way to suggest to people, either explicitly or implicitly, he doesn't understand your life. And he's not a Canadian, a real Canadian, <clears throat> because he didn't live in the country. In the case of Ignatieff, enough. And in a global world, wouldn't you think? Anyone with a brain would say, that's good. Yeah, and I remember when, uh, there was a period when I was advising Ignatieff, and he was, he was quite upset about it. He said, I always a Canadian. I love this country. How dare they say it? You know, there's a million Canadians abroad. And I said to him, yeah, for sure. But that's not just the point. The point is mm -hmm. they're saying you don't even, you're, you're an alien to the lives of your average Canadian. And that you've never, they can't picture you on public transit. They can't picture you worrying about your mortgage payment, you know, or the next hydro bill. They can't, you know, picture you worrying about any of the things that preoccupy them. Whereas Harper, who I don't believe was in a Tim Hortons before the 2004 election campaign. Mm -hmm. Before the sweater. They expert, yeah, the sweater, kit, and piano, all mm -hmm. that stuff that they do, all these devices, quite cynically, it's worked because they say, people see that and say, oh, well, he kind of, you know, I'm a dad with four kids, as you know, and, you know, they're all, I'm in hockey, I wrote that book, actually, 90% of it in a hockey rink. And it, you know, Harper knows the main Canadian demographic is this Joe and Jane front porch, mm -hmm. sleep deprived, working their butts off, going from hockey to, you know, swimming to whatever. And nobody could picture Dion or Ignatieff doing that. The guy they could picture doing that was Jack Layton, God rest his soul, and they rewarded him accordingly. And what's the uh, rural-urban disconnect with the two parties? Well, the, um, the one thing that conservatives uh, have tended to do, both in Canada and the United States, is kind of delineate between the urban-rural. Mm -hmm. So um, it's actually interesting because in the 2005-2006 federal campaign, it, they broke it down along consumer choices. So they said the... You know, the liberals are these urban, pointy-headed intellectuals who drink Starbucks, and we conservatives are Tim Hortons. Remember that ad they showed over and over again about the Gomery Commission? Mm -hmm. And it was interesting, the setting for it, it looked really down market, it looked, you know, didn't look fancy at all. That was the point. It was shot in a place that looked like it was a Tim Hortons. Sure, and tough on crime. Tough on crime. Uh, patriotic. So what did he do in that campaign? We can still, even though it was years ago, both of us can still remember the five priorities, or most mm -hmm. of the five priorities that Harper had. We can't remember a damn thing of what, you know, Dion and Ignatieff and, you know, Martin in particular. Martin had 100 priorities. When you have 100 priorities, you don't have one. 
Well, you've met Paul Martin, and I've met Paul Martin, and I've met Ignatieff, and uh, it, uh, over coffee, they're warm and uh, interesting, and they laugh, and they have a sense of humor, and you put them in front of a microphone, and what happens? And the red light goes on. Red light goes on. And they become a different person. Now, that's not only uh, liberals, but mm -hmm. I think, you know, Justin's dad is part of the reason why we got into this trap. You know, he said, and he's right, reason over passion, right? Thinking should be the way in which we make political choices. But it, that's not the way the human animal works. You know, so many of these choices are suffused with emotion and contradiction mm -hmm. and like deep, deep inside our heart kind of stuff. And I'm not saying that reason shouldn't play a role in it all. It should. But just don't discount the emotional stuff because when we've done that, as Ignatieff did, as Martin did, as Dion did, we lose. And as young Justin Trudeau speaks passionately and without notes and uh, looks like a million bucks, and, and you see people who supported his father at a rally and young people at, at the rally, you say perhaps he, he has more sizzle than he has steak or not. Well, what he's doing... That's the label he has to get out for money. Yeah, and it's amazing. Actually, the media, I think, have given him a... Uh, a heck of a break so far. You know, they haven't challenged him. You know, what's your position on the net benefits test? You know, wh what do you feel about trade with China and so on? So that's going to come, and he better have some answers. Mm -hmm. But he does speak emotionally. And in all my conservative friends, you know, uh, when I do other panels, they make fun of it. And I'm like, you're making a big mistake. He's now learned from you guys. You're the ones who always spoke emotionally see, about I politics. See. Now you're making mm. fun of them for doing what you do. So you go on Sun News. Yeah. So Conservative, the, great debate, raw debate. What, I'm the house of, communist. I bet you are a communist over there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Sun News, that whole situation. They are, uh, they're good to me and they never censored me. There was once that, there was one guy turned off my microphone because uh, we were debating sex education. He was against it and I was mm. for it and he didn't like what I was saying so he turned off my microphone. <laughs> But otherwise, they're good to me. That's effective. And I don't, yeah, yeah well, I kind of loved it, actually. Mm -hmm. And they, um, you know, the thing I, I like about them is they're honest about their bias. And one of the traps the, you know, the media has fallen into, as you know very well, is pretending that, you know, it doesn't have a view. In the selection of stories, and the selection of quotes, the prominence you give to a certain fact, mm -hmm. that's showing, you know, some subjectivity. And the Sun guys are very open. They said, you know, we're conservatives and, right. and so and on. And we need a platform in this country, and here it is, and uh, like uh, it or lump it. And so they have me on, and I like fighting with them. I like getting up in their grill and just letting them have it. So. Well, often it's not what you say. It should be, but it's not. It's what people hear. That's right. It's always what you hear. And so the one of the conservative wordsmiths I talk about in there is uh, Frank Luntz. Mm. And Luntz, that's the slogan for his firm. And he has advised everybody from Harper to the Bushes. And so his point is, you know, don't say oil drilling, say energy exploration. Yes. Don't say global warming, you know, talk about it's a bit of climate change. Right, we harvest trees, we don't cut them down. Right, and so mm -hmm. changing the lexicon. And if you look at successful conservatives, so George Bush, George W. Bush was an example of this, compassionate conservatism. You know, I think mm -hmm. a lot of people would agree that it was more the, the latter than the former. But he was able to, much in the way that Romney's done in this campaign, lull people into thinking, well, he's not so bad. Yeah, so if you were a betting man uh, in the U this U.S. election, if you were... I, well, I mean, the president made a terrible, terrible mistake. He did not bring his A-game to that first debate. He let Romney speak with clarity about values. He came back for the second and the third, but now it's so tight, you know, it's anybody's guess. I think all of the Hurricane Sandy stuff... Mm -hmm. is actually going to have an effect of determining the outcome. How the first responders respond, what happens, how, how the candidates rea react, all of the above. And I feel sorry for the Romney guys because this is an instance where you want to see the president. You want to hear from the president. You mm -hmm. want to see the president going, meeting with people whose lives mm -hmm. have been hammered by this historic storm. And so Romney fades away from that. Um, so, I mean, you know, so it's Florida, Ohio, Iowa, Colorado. That's where it's all going to get determined, so... Thanks nice for having me. Nice to see you. Good to see you. Warren Kinsella, Fight the Right, a manual for surviving the coming conservative apocalypse.
Remember, you can join me on Twitter at Fanny Kiefer or catch our conversations on YouTube. There will be many more rabble-rousing guests to come. Till then, thanks for watching Shaw TV and being with me today. <laughs>